of all, welcome everyone and thank you all for being a part of Dancers Network's first Black Box series. So Dancers Network are really excited to have you all and between you guys there's so much knowledge and experience in this room that I feel like it will definitely benefit the dance industry and the dance community. So today we're going to be touching on subjects like uh, current fees, dancers work etiquette, agents responsibilities and choreographers roles um, and Dancers Network. We'll also be, throughout the conversation, um, getting questions from the black box, which have been um, sent in from Dancers Network's followers. So, to get started, first of all, what is Dancers Network? It's an organisation that is in support of absolutely everyone of the industry, but obviously our main focus is the protection of the dancers. I think encouraging them to have a voice and then us in turn creating like a unified one for all of us. We want then our like agents and the companies we work alongside to like value that which will then hopefully in terms of this organisation improve our working conditions and our pay and our hours and then right now it is just a space for us to create some positive change and to put a message out that if we all come together then that really can happen. Yeah and how did it start? How did you guys come up with the idea? We you know we've been having this conversation for decades now I would say I think all of us had this conversation at in some point in their careers and I mean, with you know, obviously Adrian being here, that you know started Dance United um, a couple of years ago, that has been tried before, and I think we just got to the place where I was ready. I personally was ready to give up. I was ready to give up on this industry and in on this country. Really, I was like yeah. ready to bounce. And you know, Lily was getting to a point where it was getting so frustrating and so sad that something had to be done. And you know, it started off with just a meeting to talk and see where we at, and one thing led to another, and we, yeah, I don't, I don't even know. Yeah, it just became. We we had done so many jobs together, and I feel like oh, we shared that one thing in common. That generally, I mean, it is a good, it's not a good thing, but it is at the same time we just shared the same frustration. Yeah. Like, we were all having the same conversation every single time, like. Why every single time we're doing a job that we all should potentially be in absolute awe of and in complete love with, but yet it's become a habit that we're all complaining because we're not earning enough money. And I think one conversation was a huge reality check for me when it was one of my friends and we were doing a week of a TV job for an artist and she was actually earning less money than her side hustle in a bar earning some tips. And that to me, I was like, something is not right here and we we generally do need to do something about it. Like. When I think about the musicians we work alongside are all completing exactly the same job, but then they're getting paid on time. Like the cameramen that are filming us getting paid by the same production company, but are on like triple the amount and they're getting meal tickets and getting all these extra little things. It's just like, how? let's just sit back a minute and think about how can we, as an industry and a community, figure out how this gets distributed fairly to the talent as well. Mm -hmm. Because we haven't, clearly that's just, lack of a voice on our behalf or from our community and then I think we both looked at each other, we both got inspired by each other's individual passions about that and we created, like I spoke to Equity on my own, you did as well, then we came up with this um, open discussion event and you just jumped on straight by my side mm -hmm. from the get go and we've just been in it and really committed to it ever since because we do really care about it. Yeah, and this is kind of where we're at, yin and yang. Yeah. <laughs> um, so touching on what you said, let's jump into our first topic and let's just go straight in and talk about fees. So in 2019, in your opinion, do you think it's possible for a professional dancer to survive on literally just dancing alone? I wouldn't say it's not possible because obviously there is work out there, but I do think that obviously fees have always been a huge topic within our industry. It's never been a positive topic mm. um, and I think like you said there's never been a voice mm -hmm. to kind of open up that conversation as to why they are what they are why they haven't changed and kind of why people have accepted them to be honest because at the end of the day we've accepted the fee and i say we as in the community have accepted that this is what we get paid this is the fee and this is what it is yeah. um i feel with the conversations that we've had regularly you know we are all <coughs> starting to just just because we are speaking things are changing and I guess, I'm not saying that no one's spoken before, I just think maybe people haven't really like pushed it. Um, and you know, especially with the, the way the move has changed, you know, we don't have as many TV shows, we don't have as many, you know, outlets for dancers to work in. Because I know like, even the fees have been the same for the last 
20 years mm. but things have actually procrastinated because I remember back there was cars with you know there was automatic cars there was you said meal vouchers just those little things were just automatic so I don't know where now they've kind of gone um, but at the same time I feel with us speaking and trying to grow we can obviously make change it's gonna take time but people out there are just not aware like I don't think people yeah. even know what our fees are yeah. they're just kind of like oh okay well cool well that's that's send me an invoice you know 100%, I mean? 100% I think the the main thing that we realized as well by speaking to people is that they genuinely don't know it's really really lack of knowledge and lack of communication you know and it's, i think it's really important what you said about the fee might have been stagnant but everything else was taken away and i think that plays a really big role because what really gets to like my financial situation when i look at my taxes my biggest expenses is when i'm on a job and i'm traveling to the job and i'm eating out because i'm on the job and i'm there for you know sometimes 10 hours sometimes 12 hours that's three four times i'm buying something small to eat I think that I think that the point that Royston made about it being accepted is really like the crux issue and yeah. it is also the issue in going forward because as much as people are going to come together and start to move the rates and if there's the next person who will accept the lower rates unfortunately that is the position whereby it all fails and so what's exciting for me about this movement that you guys have created is it's really giving the knowledge and the voice to the dancers in mass to move with power mm -hmm. and so if everybody's educated and everybody understands the parameters of what really you're all trying to do then i think it then cuts out the thing of okay well i'm going to accept it because in any way if i don't the next person will you know, if you've got enough people next to you who all go and know, then you're in a space to be able to get something to change. So, hundred percent. My um, my issue with the whole fees thing is that whatever the fee is that has been or will be, is that we're setting it as a fee for everyone to yeah. earn in every month in every job, which is completely wrong because yes. I don't. If you do in a shopping centre fashion show, yeah. I shouldn't expect to get paid the same as I'm, I'm doing a live TV show. Yeah. So I think there's more of a conversation of what we've got used to and what the fee is, is yeah. you have to be realistic of the job you're doing and the fee that, that <clears throat> would come with that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very dangerous already that we're setting, no, we haven't set, but that we get used to a specific fee because people are getting like very cocky or problematic with certain fees on certain jobs, which in certain jobs you shouldn't and some others you should. Mm. Also, um, I also, on that same token, don't agree with everybody, every dancer being paid the same thing. No. Mm. You know, so that is the thing about fees in general, is that, yes, of course, it can't be set. And I think what we're talking about is a kind of a, a minimum base yeah, I think that's in nice. order to work mm -hmm. from. But we, like, we never went, you know, if you're talking to a production company, we would never say to a production company, oh, the dancer's fee is X, mm. because it's always done job by job and it's also done dancer by dancer mm -hmm. to some degree um you know you, you guys know i have a model agency as well and so working in that industry i see the direct comparison about how it works um, and what happens when you're a brand new face the same thing you know if you're a student or if you're 10 years in and you've just completed three back-to-back -back world tours your value is not the same mm. and therefore and in no other industry you know if you're just you know graduated medical student or you're a surgeon you're also not getting paid for the same fees so you know there needs to be some kind of reflection if we're going to if we're going to look at everything to do with fees you know it's about the jobs absolutely 100 percent because it's also about the revenue that is being generated from that job precisely. revenue on that shopping precisely center yeah. isn't the same yeah. as you know somebody on tour and dvd sales x y and z you know what i mean so but then obviously it's it's start it's starting to find targets of who what where how on certain jobs what we're trying to what we're trying to achieve for that person and also the creative the brand the dancer knowing their worth yeah you know what i mean yeah. not just coming into the industry i'm a dancer this is oh all my mates get paid this oh that's what i get paid yeah. what are you worth you know what I mean? What's your speciality? What kind of dancer are you? You know what I mean? Because obviously there's some dancers, like you said, that might just be doing 
the fashion show run and they might never want to do anything else you've got music i mean you've got musical theater you've got the commercial you've got you know a touring dancer you've got so many different avenues so yeah. then essentially to create this change do you think that it's going to take dancers saying no to doing certain jobs yeah. or is it a case of agents pushing for certain fees what do you think is the change i personally I like, yeah i personally think and this is something I've literally heard from every single person I've ever spoken to, is that it has to come from the dancers. It has to, because we are the ones doing the job. We're the ones doing the work. And unless we find our power within ourselves, there's no way our agents will be able to back us up. Because if in a position where, let's say I'm a dancer that doesn't understand my value, how am I gonna expect my agents to understand my value? If you don't know it yourself, do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's really difficult. Like when I speak to younger generations, they don't see how incredible they are, but then they also don't recognize the things that they need to work on. I think the, the biggest problem that we face is the segregation. I think that we're all like doing our own thing, you know? Agents are doing their own thing individually, dancers are doing their own thing individually, equity is doing their own thing individually, and no, no one's communicating to you. Try to get the best things out of what we're doing into one place and move forward as um, a community. Yeah. Okay, I think that the biggest problem is that the dancers are not represented exclusively. So, I know we're right at the beginning of this conversation, but for me it is... It goes back to that it goes back to that and I think that as we start to talk and as this movement starts to progress you're going to keep coming back round to it so that's why I'm just throwing it in here at yeah. the beginning of course we are not we're not representing dancers exclusively um, in the UK and that's never been the history um, however it is it is the norm and it's the practice a in every other every other industry every other creative industry in London and the practice for every other dancer who's represented around the world and so when you talk about how whether this can be pushed by the dancer or the agent as an agent I can't push for a dancer or a rate or something on a job knowing that the production company know that they can just call up somebody else yeah. and yeah. get that exact same product yeah. for cheaper yeah right and that is what happens and that is how it goes that's why you know any artist they've got one manager they don't have five managers they've got one so there's only one source to be able to really book that person through because we had a conversation with um, a production company yeah is that right? and they said to us on the difference oh, between yeah. America and the UK is that in, in America they seek the talent in the UK, they'll yeah. go to the agency and seek extras because yeah. we're we're technically seen as extras because well, we're no, not. We, we are. That is the problem. Yeah. Is that over here you aren't. You're not. You can fight and talk about this all you want, but in the the realistic scheme of things, you are seen as a pool of dancers picked from a bunch of extras because when they come over here, they get the agency that they want to work with, and then they'll and get not the, the agency, not the dancer. Because we're we are literally represented by everyone. So it's like, okay, well, which if I can find you anywhere, exactly. I will pick which one, which agency I prefer, yep. even and though that shouldn't be, be cheapest. in which one is yeah. going to be cheapest. So it became a contest of who's selling their dancers out for less. Yeah. <laughs> it became a contest. Uh, and it's not, it's not, again, it's not to place blame anywhere because I, I wouldn't be able to, to find it, to find the blame, but that's what it is. Mm -hmm. And essentially, that's the same thing that was said to us. Until you solely represented by one, like, one agency that's not going to change the whole point of you being represented by everyone you it actually means you're not represented by, by anybody, anybody. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly that's good slide and quite yeah. 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 somebody write that down yeah. 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 he's done this before <laughs> no you have <laughs> yes i think um during that whole transition obviously i think our community the more discussions we have will agree that go, moving forward this is something that we should you know, keep putting out there and push forward for. But in the transition of, for instance, as like you just said, if you're trying to fight for a dancer, but then obviously that fear of then them going to somebody else and getting the same dancer, what we've discussed is that communication then between the agent and the talent that the dancer at the time, to let them know the communication that's going on, because currently what's happened 
in the past and it's called a bit of a disturbance is that obviously then as a dancer you don't know any different so you're just going with whoever's offering you the job so now you're just agent hopping yeah so someone's offered you this artist little do you know they're actually really fighting for you and trying to get getting you a lot more of the job than another agency just come along and ask you the same thing you don't know any different don't know what's going on above mm -hmm. and you're just going where the job is and where the work is so i think during this whole transition this is where communication is key and yeah. something that we do push for to just you know honest in a way, about it yeah let's just talk about what's going on i think like, that goes down to the talent or the creative knowing themselves as a business and I think that's where it all gets really, really confusing in my part is because dancers, yes, they are on different agencies, but there's this thing of like dancers work, dancers work for the agent. Like we work, agents work for the dancers. We are your managers. Talk to us, mm. speak to us, tell us what you want. Ask questions. Like you said, people have that fear factor. Mm -hmm. What are you scared of? Like that's a question. What are you actually scared of from your agent? Because we're only here to supply work for you which obviously in return works for us so there's some form of agreement there already so i don't understand why people are scared to talk to their agents because for me anyone i've spoken to is like you know you ask for a job and some people accept jobs they accept castings they haven't asked me anything about a pay and then it then it gets to the part where you've got the gig and they're like oh, oh i'm getting that or it's not what i thought well, what did you think because you didn't mm. answer me in the first place yeah you know what i mean and i've learned that it's my job to actually re-give that information off the jump so there is no there is no backlash later down the line but i feel that that fear factor once dancers start really walking as a brand and as a business it's like you said like you have a, if an artist has a manager you know who your manager is when you have a point of call who do you call why did that not happen why was that late who dropped the ball it's the same it's the same situation you know if you go to get a, a i don't know could be get a new mobile phone you've got vodafone you've got free you've got o2 you've got orange you do the rounds who's got the best deal yeah you know what i mean and that's seeing that's and that's the thing that's all coming back to this okay i need to find my person who's my team yes and i'm going to work with them then the agents are going to have less dancers yeah but just you yeah. know it's just like this, everyone this, everyone's to. playing a numbers game right like to mm -hmm. to survive and so you're losing that thing about really having a relationship. relationship it's just in the dancing industry agents are not seen as agents yeah. and that's the end of it like yeah. you I, I, yeah. when we uh, when i used to dance i yeah. never thought of them as my agent because i had so many and as you said like it is about having that relationship with your agent and stuff but th that doesn't really exist mm -hmm. most of the time because mm -hmm. you're seen as an employee mm -hmm. you're not yeah. seen as a, an agent to the dancers like it's the other way around and that's why obviously it comes to the wholesale management and yeah. all that it just i never felt like my agent was the person that represents me towards the job it's mm. the other way around it's they get the job and then they're looking for people and i want to be the one that gets yeah. it yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly exactly so the whole state is like, like, um, i think like being a student is hard because a lot of us are scared because we're like oh like, what if we don't get jobs so obviously we're not the only ones but i think we are sometimes the biggest problem because people will accept things for really low rates because they're like, oh, like, it's a job, and then they, they don't know what it should be. Mm. And because we don't really get people talking to us about it, yeah, it's just a shame because we don't know a lot. Yeah. So then it's like, we not that we make it worse, but we're not helping the movement come across for us to get better pay. Yeah. Yeah, but with that being said, I feel like you're not helping because you, you don't have anyone explaining anything to mm -hmm. you. You know, it's not good enough for us to sit here and say, well, the students um, are undercutting our industry or they, they're using students for all these jobs. How can we expect a student to know when nobody's going in and telling you? Um, so if, like, as a student being an extra and we were put in that situation where, like, some of us were used for actual choreography, how... Because I know a lot of people would love that opportunity, but then how would we be able to differentiate between we shouldn't be doing this or yeah. we, mm -hmm. and then or but then appreciating the fact that we've got an opportunity to do something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. I was gonna say like, if I hire a student, nine times out of ten, I don't look at them as a student. I hire them because they're a dancer. Mm -hmm. I'm hiring you to come in, regardless what you do outside of the studio space. You're hired as a dancer, so you know. Grantly, you do as requested basically now obviously if you know you're a student i feel that's kind of like because again do, does the student have an agent 
you know, are we, are you, do you have someone to speak to at that time? Yeah. Um, it's also, how did you, how did you get in this position? You know, who brought you in this position? Because there's always a way, was it an agent? Was it a choreographer? Was it a friend of a friend? That's where I think as the student, you need to go to that point of contact and speak and be like, okay, can I get some insight here? Even if it's your school. You know what I mean? You might have to call your headmaster. The headmaster, if you still call it headmaster, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? The head teacher. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you know, like going to your headmaster and be like, "Listen, I'm I'm here. What is what's the terms?" Uh, but I think from you in the workplace, a you're an adult. B know know who you are, know what you're doing, and always have that point of contact before you go into anything if you're unsure. That way, you know. It could even be another agent that you're not with. You know what I mean? Just to pick up the phone and be like, hi, I've just got this position. Not too sure. Would it be possible for you to represent me on this particular job? Or could you give me some feedback? I think there's always avenues. Equity, dancers network. Exactly. There's, you know, there's always ways. Don't ever go in there blind and think you're on your own mm -hmm. because um, you're not. Okay, cool. So yeah. let's talk about um, agents. Let's talk about agents in general, what agents are. And ultimately, what do you guys think makes a good agent so as we've discussed if something's happening on the job you phone your agent if they bring you a piece of paper to sign you phone your agent anything if you're uncomfortable about where they've asked you to get changed you phone your agent and if transport is not provided home and you're in the middle of nowhere and no one seems to be looking after you you phone your agent that is what your agent is there for 360 every day of the year for everything that happens to you while you're working and then beyond so once you've done the job your agent is the one who sorts out your money and gets you paid your agent is the one who then chases the client if they haven't paid you on time and so for me that is what an agent's job is and that is what they should do for me for me like what is the best you can get from an agent is three things really, transparency from one to the other, from both parties, that everything that they receive from their client or whoever is completely told to the artist mm -hmm. from word go, um, to someone you feel confident talking to, someone yeah. you like, you can talk to out of, you, you know, if you've got any questions, anything. And then third, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's about having a relationship. Yeah, yeah I think that's, exactly that's, what I was saying. Yeah. It's, that's the relationship. Transparency, communication, and having a solid relationship. But there's always going to be a sour apple in a bunch. Like we just discussed about fees. The fees can be that, and then someone can go, oh, I'll do it for cheap. There's mm -hmm. always going to yeah. be that person until we, and you, you're never going to get rid of those people in the world, in society. There's always going to be someone that's going to try and overtake in a bitter and negative way. Mm -hmm. I think the thing with dancers and their agencies is just having that relationship and having that open trust and believing that the person that's representing them they actually believe are yeah. representing them and isn't it a casting agent that does that role and then the agencies are the ones that just represent the dancers right. that's a possible yeah. i think that's a way okay so because that's my danger as soon as i'm just being completely yeah, yeah. honest here like if i'm getting a job if i'm an agent okay and I'm probably more inclined to use my own dancers because I'm going to make more money out of them. Yeah. Just saying. So I think that's what naturally happens now. Yeah. Not for everyone, but yeah, and I know it's different now because we don't have sole agencies. I yeah, understand exactly. that. Yeah, so, exactly. So, so that's the that's the thing. But so, then I don't think it should double up as an agent and a casting agent. No. I think it should be casting agent. But it also or happens an agent. that way now with then, choreographers. But that, no, that's no, no, what no, I was like, going to say. Yeah. I, and I think I'm it happens putting, that way. Firstly, with choreographers, yeah. it's choreographers having a job and then obviously then booking the people and then that that's like a, yeah but then that's like like an agent and i just don't think as as i'm saying it should be separate casting agents exactly. and agencies yeah. i believe yeah. the same for yeah, choreographers yeah, yeah. and agents mm -hmm. yes, i'm not exactly. saying that no, choreographers no, 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 should no, no, still yeah, yeah. No, no, do no. the asking thing i just think Absolutely. it's so unclear think, now we're like a free for all and I everyone tries right. to do a bit of everything and i know that's very new generation be a dancer be a choreographer be an agent be everything at the same time <laughs> but i do think it's written on my instagram bio precisely precisely that though like because we try to do i know it's because we're all like you know trying to get the best for us 
but it that's what the danger uh, is absolutely here. And, and, on, and I think that I think that that's really valid like what we're saying who instigates all this well who's created this dancers yeah. who's the one that wants change dancers yeah. so it has to be dancers that start yes dancers, ideally dancers. everyone is comes together to be yeah. part of this yeah. but, and that comes back to the first question was like or well, second question yeah. is do dancers need to say no to jobs to make this happen well if if not everyone's in accordance like with the agents the production companies whatever then yes you do need to say no you need to make a revolution and yeah. no big revolution has happened by just it's going yeah. Yeah. you know women's <laughs> rights any racist yeah. thing like anything is because people stood up for themselves and said we've had enough yeah so the only way really if not everyone is in agreement is to say no is to make a revolution is speak up like you guys are starting to do yeah, yeah. The point right now is no one really knows who represents them the best right now because th there's that misunderstanding again going back what an agent actually does are you actually fighting for the best rate for me when i can clearly see that i can be getting more there like no one i think the whole transition us together agents do need to step up a little bit and help us understand what it is that they're doing so then we can then have then we have the choice because right now i feel like that's we can have the power and have the voice to choose but we have to know who it is that we would choose and yeah. i feel like right I agree, now i, I agree to disagree a little bit only yeah. because having a dance career like i knew who had my back do you know what i mean i knew what agencies i was working with i knew what choreographers i was working with i knew where i was going to get my jobs from because i trusted them do you know what i mean mm -hmm. and that's like i'm talking for the first 10 years of my career i probably worked with one choreographer religiously and that 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 choreographer was the same agency that I worked with yeah. and that agency met me I mean I was a little street dancer but then brought me in and got me into things that I never even dreamed of doing because they saw something in me yeah. they they had conversations with me they made me step out my comfort zone mm -hmm. and it wasn't about a choice it was just about knowing this agency and this choreographer at the time as well because I feel like back then guys choreographers yeah. were more like mentors as well you you had someone to kind of discuss things with I'm not saying you don't now i'm saying like you know in that prime it was really um you know the relationship was so solid you knew you, you even saw dancers before you even saw the dancers you, you knew, know who they were you knew, working you know with, who they were working with. you know what the, yeah. you knew who the choreographer was you knew who the agency yeah. was you yeah. knew just like okay that's that one or that there with that one that's yeah, that yeah, one yeah. and you knew that now i feel like now it's about it's not about making a choice for who's better it's it's making a choice who's better for you for you yeah yeah but at the yeah. same time but what she's saying is like okay i would love to know who i'm going on a job with trust me that's the first thing i ask but i don't get given that information and when i ask for the information it, the, the most answer it's i can't tell i don't have more information um why do you not why do you need to know like it's a lot Some, of that sometimes, yeah. sometimes sometimes that is actually genuinely the answer though and i get it it's not the the answer you want to hear but sometimes from an agent's perspective you know sometimes the client can say look we want to put this out but please don't mention the artist um, yeah please there is don't NDAs you know please stuff please don't say and we and then we can give to the, our talent say look this is the situation this is why i can give you as soon as i can give you more information i will update you yeah but, but then I, how are you how am, am i as a professional meant to be taken this like i don't feel like as, i'm I taking it seriously trust, as a pro you no, should no, no, trust 100 percent. but then you should trust me got you you should trust me that if i sign an nda with you mm -hmm. that yeah, i know abs absolutely that i know between us and so you're representing me right yes now i signed an nda with you that i know whatever information you give me is confidential and i cannot be leaking that information because not only does that ruin me but that ruins your business absolutely. and if there's a consequence to that which i will have to accept Fair enough, but then I need you to trust me too. Mm -hmm. Because even though you, in your mind and your perspective, this may seem like something incredible, I may have had an experience where I'm like, but do you understand what no, I mean? I, I think that there, there must be, from the, the reason why agents don't feel comfortable giving that information or saying to the clients, I will have to give that information to my client because that's in our agreement, is because dancers do not know how to shut up. Yeah, but that's even... <laughs> no, no, do you know what I mean? So it does come back to our work etiquette and us understanding what are you signing. Yeah. If you're signing an NDA, this is not negotiable. This is not a thing where you can just like... I think it boils all down to communication again. and again, yeah. just yeah. respecting because I say, yeah. I think everything you're saying is completely right. 
if I have if I've signed an NDA to a client, I can't tell my client what the job is. Yeah. I need my client to trust me to to know that. Listen, I can't say much right now, but you see this got you this is i think you're going to enjoy this and if you don't remember when i tell you you can say oh actually i don't want to do yeah. that well, yeah, but for me what doesn't you make sense for me what doesn't make sense is if yeah. if an agent represents a dancer <laughs> the agent shouldn't have more information than the dancer because you're representing him so it's actually it you shouldn't be in between both of them it's you just you just need to know the information that the dancer knows. It, mm-hmm. it shouldn't be that you get told information you can't pass on to your dancer. Like, and it's not even just with MDAs to be fair. I think it's more like with sometimes you don't get told. Back well, times. back in the day, you don't get paid. You don't get told what you get paid until you get confirmed. Like, mm-hmm. why should I be penciled on a job and not know how much I'm gonna pay? And then you expect See, to, me agree. to go. No, I'm not no, saying. Yeah, I'm yeah. not saying yeah, yeah, it's specific. No, 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 but of course, because how can you? How can you, how can you accept a job? You, know, you don't know. How can and people you even get, accept the pencil if you don't know how much. You're and people get, get paid. frightened I mean, to to ask. Like, and that's obviously a problem of people. Mm-hmm. But it's just bonkers. Yeah, and I, I think that that's again understandably there is certain things that might be out of the question, but there's a lot of information that is not being passed on and it can be a first step. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, what am I getting paid? What are my hours, the working conditions? Is it standard working conditions? Who's standards? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because again, going back to that, every single agency has different terms and conditions. No dancer does their homework to actually read it. So they don't know what they're going into. Again, back and forth, we need to put in the work to understand what it's saying and then to say, I actually don't agree with this. I don't want to work under these conditions. Is there anything else we can work out before the job even happens? So that when the job comes in, that can be then, I already know what I'm going into. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But that doesn't exist yet. That isn't something that is established yet. But also, you know I mean? it's, I'm, I'm, it's hard. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, it's I'm hard. I'm completely with you. But just to bring the other side to it as well, is it's incredible how many dancers don't reply for days to questions about availability yeah. and things like that. So there's definitely a two side to the story. Yeah. And it's making sure that dancers understand that as much as you want to be professional on stage, please be professional off the stage. Yes. Mm. It's no, so important. Like I feel like it doesn't sometimes matter if you're the greatest dancer, but like I always feel like in my career as a dancer, I was so professional off stage that that's why a lot of the time maybe I wasn't the best talented dancer at some points but because I conducted myself so well people rely on me and you, you are a business yeah. you're not just an artist and, that's and I think it's so important that we bring both sides as much as yeah. the agent needs to do their part the dancer needs to do that do their part yeah. what we're trying to do is make things better, better. Mm. and so having this situation it means that everybody everybody but mainly the agents are gonna have to do better let's be honest like if you have 40 dancers on your book you can concentrate on 40 exactly. dancers but yeah. right now there's hundreds like you yeah. know you go to websites and you look through and you're like how are they how, meant to yeah. represent them well yeah. Yeah. Because and this is not know. dancers or yeah. agents for it's just the way it is yeah. how can you represent someone when you've got 200 how are you going to remember what they and look like or the what, what so their then, job they're exactly, doing so, or, then, so then the availability and all of that kind of stuff you know then then all of that just it all moves because you have a pool of dancers and they are your roster and it's yeah I mean for me this is the way mm. that's gonna that's going to give everybody the best way to, to really really move forward.